Hello there, people. Today, I thought we could produce a part from scratch. Draw it up, cut it out, bend it. Let's go, I guess. Flip the screen back. Oops, wrong thing. Yeah, and by the way, finally got my uh, old sun panels up again. And also, finally, 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 this IKEA kitchen thing. And the computer, I just put a bunch of screws right through the case up into the, the sheet there. <laughs> Worked a treat. I made this. It's a powder coated, textured black, matte black. Stainless steel screws because we use them everywhere. Found some black uh, drawer slides. So yeah, I can keep my end mills in here now. Oh, wonderful. Maybe you saw this on Instagram, but I powder coated it as well. Well, not me, the guys did. Super nice. Super quick and easy to make, you know, storage space for your tools this way. Anyway, that's enough of a shop update. Let's uh, draw something up. Okay. You're probably familiar with Fusion 360, but if you're not, you should be. It's free for uh, startups and uh, if you're a hobbyist. So I thought maybe we could produce type of a U bracket. 40, 90, this could be like 40 as well, sure, I guess. We're gonna go into sheet metal, we're gonna extrude this, 55, no, let's go 65 maybe. Three millimeters is fine, we're gonna go side, side two. And since nobody likes sharp corners, we're gonna put some fillets on here. Say eight. That's pretty. We're gonna put in a couple of holes. Maybe 30 in between them. We could have them in line with each other. We could also put a center line there and then add a Thing there so that we could center it. Kabamo! H for hole. Yeah, I guess that's perfect for an M6 screw. What do you think? I think you like it. I like it. Our thingy misspelled but close enough we're gonna export it that's gonna be a good enough place as any it has been exporter we're gonna make sure we're running our ui path script we're gonna be importing it there it is conveniently enough and since we need to choose the side with the fillets we're gonna just choose this side the script is doing its thing. A lot of stuff is going on in the background. It's rename, renaming the uh, layer names in the DXF. It's doing calculations for material cost. It's uh, making scripts that I can use to just double click them to print uh, labels. It's asking if we want to bend the part where we do want to. So it's going to go into this program and produce the bending program. We could already move to the router, but let's just finish this up because it's about to finish. So it has finished. It's asking if we want to continue and by continue, it means save and close the file basically. That's really all there is to it. 
Someday we should go through the script and see every little thing it does. Maybe, maybe at the end of this uh, video I'll add the files that were produced in the background. So uh, see you at the router. Bye bye. Okay, so here we are at the router. We're gonna import our DXF that was produced. We're not gonna take the band lines and the text and whatnot. We just want these profiles. Let's put it over there, and we're pretty much done when it comes to CAD, so we're gonna press this button to generate stages or a G-code. Check this out. BAM! At the bottom there in the green field, it says five stages generated. And I don't know how good you're gonna see that, but there's five different G-code programs there. And I need to do a Control F5 to refresh them so that they're applied properly. The first one is just to make these four holes. The second one is to countersink two of these holes. The fourth one is just doing the outer loop. Then we're gonna chamfer the outer loop and then we're gonna chamfer it again but on the underside. And that's, uh, that's about it. Let's go. Well then again, you might as well just tag along. We need some material. There's a bunch of scrap over here. Maybe even the this one. This is three millimeters, yes. We're gonna wanna put it about there maybe. That's good. And we're about ready to go, so I might as well just go ahead and turn on the extractor because I still haven't put a button closer. I'm gonna have the machine automate this part, but I'm getting there. <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna wanna act ac activate our vacuum zone. And we're ready to go. I'm gonna press start, it's gonna change the tool to begin with. Because we're gonna start off with a 4mm end mill. This end mill is really old, so don't expect too good surface finish. I want to get out the way. You can tell the surface finish isn't perfect, but uh, I'm not ready to change that tool yet. I want it to use it until it's not, well, it's not gonna break, but almost. And I'm chamfering quite fast here, so this is gonna be semi-jagged, but anyway. Kinda hard to get this to focus, honestly. 
And we're just gonna chamfer the bottom side and we're gonna be done. And we're done. We're gonna jog away. We're gonna turn off our vacuum zone and our pump. And if we press this button, we're gonna blow air into these channels so that this lets go. Oh. There's a scratch in the middle of it. Stupid scrap piece. Anyway, gotta turn off the extractor. And now comes the big thing, you know. Gonna bend it. Yeah, let's see. Oh, we're gonna at least, we could use a label, but I don't, I don't wanna be bothered with a label when I know exactly where it is. Enter, don't save the last one. And this is basically the setup we already have because if you're doing small enough pieces and it's two or three millimeters, this setup is the one it's gonna recommend. So and we're gonna do it. Choo -choo -choo -choo. Let's get the um, tripod. I need two hands. Need a need, but I should use two hands. Okay. We need to get closer, I think. We should see the screen as well, right? Like so. Move in the screen. Is it in there? Well, close enough. Up there, it's demonstrating how to put the, the piece in. So, at first, it's going to underbend. Uh, and that's because it doesn't know the exact properties of the, the aluminum. And it doesn't want to risk overbending it. So we're gonna underbend it, we're gonna measure and then compensate. As we can see, we have about 93.3 and we have a hold button up there. And now when I press the data button, it's sending that value to the controller and it's asking you wanna compensate these three degrees because we're going to 90. And we're gonna say yeah, and we're gonna do that again. Oh, come on. That was too fast. We're gonna put it back in. Put a few more degrees into it. And we're gonna see, we're gonna be very close to, to 90 there. 89.8 something. And then, we're supposed to put it in this way, I can tell you. And that's about it. So let's go and measure this thing and see if we did a good job. Okay, we could open this up and see we're supposed to have 90 and these were supposed to be 40 let's see so this was supposed to be 40 I don't know if you can tell but we're at well focus you Jesus Christ how, how do I even you see Oh, showing 0 
Well, it's uh, around there anyway. Let's check the other one. This one we did rebend once when we compensated for the angle, so typically it's not going to be exactly as good. Well, come on with the. Yeah, okay, we're going to be as real good. And this is supposed to be 90, and your flat pattern needs to be really dialed to get a good measurement here. So we're. That's real good actually. 160 microns. That's gonna be good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's that's what that entails. Uh, yeah, no, we should uh, we should end it there. Maybe I'm gonna show you the the other files that were produced at the same time and how sweet that is. Let's see, let's see. So here are the files. We're gonna have the step file, the DXF file, and the DXF file, I'm opening a V-carve here. It's got the name of the file in single font if we wanna engrave it on the piece. All these lines have different colors because they're on different layers and these layers, can you tell? Arlu 33333 So the last letter has been changed to the thickness of the material. That way the Kimla can apply these templates perfectly. And uh, we do have a picture of the part. I'm gonna do a software thing later that's gonna be using all these pictures. Uh, there's a text file with the X and Y values and calculating the material cost. There's a uh, Visual Basic script that the UiPath script made, so it's script inception. Uh, and uh, if I double click it, the label printer is gonna print the perfect label according to a template with QR codes and uh, and regular barcode for the uh, press break and everything. It's beautiful. I also have a Visual Basic script on the on the desktop there, so I can take any of these files in case I didn't have that basic uh, Visual Basic script and just drag it and drop it on top of that one. That would generate the same type of label with the correct customer, the email, everything. And yeah, RPA. Get going, do it. I'll happily do a video on it and show you how I did that, if, if anyone's interested. Anyway, so uh, it's Sunday today. I was actually trying to make this video yesterday, but the battery kept dying and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, peace.